10 engines, jet-powered vertical takeoff, a flying sci-fi truck from Cold War Germany. It flew, but it also vanished. Let me tell you why. I'm Bill, and this is Buffalo Airport. Let's dive in. All right, friend, let me tell you about one of the wildest aviation experiments ever to take the skies, the Dornier DO-31. Imagine it, the world's first and still only jet-powered vertical takeoff transport aircraft ever built. It's like something straight out of a sci-fi movie, but it actually flew. And yeah, I reference sci-fi movies a lot because, you know, I'm a fan. So, cast your mind back to the late 1950s and 60s, smack in the middle of the Cold War. The German Air Force was getting a bit antsy. They looked at their nice long runways and thought, hmm, what if the Eastern Bloc decides to, you know, blow them up? Fair point. So, they started dreaming up dispersed operations, maybe even using stretches of Autobahn as makeshift airfields. That meant they needed planes that could basically hop straight up and down, no runway required. Enter the Donier DO-31. Donier started tinkering with VTOL ideas as early as 1959, and by 1962, the West German government was so on board they handed over a formal development contract. They even built these wild hover rigs just to figure out how to keep this beast from falling over during vertical flight and talk about commitment. They developed a special hybrid computer, the Donier DO-960, just to crunch the numbers for stable VTOL control. You know it's serious when you're building a computer for your computer. They built three prototypes, E1, E2, and E3. E1 was for horizontal flight. E2 was just a static test article. Poor E2, never even saw the sky. And E3 was the real star, designed to test full vertical flight. On February 10th, 1967, the E1 made its maiden flight, just doing regular airplane stuff. Then, in July, or November 22nd, depending on who you ask, let's just say sometime in late 67, E3 took to the air and hovered. This giant jet just hung in the air. Now, the engine setup on this thing was bonkers. It had 10 engines. Yes, 10. Two Rolls-Royce Pegasus 5-2 vectored thrust engines, the same kind that powered the Harrier jump jet each with around 7,000 kilograms of thrust, about 15,500 pounds, used both for lift and cruise. But wait, there's more. To really get off the ground in hover mode, it had eight extra Rolls-Royce RB162-4D lift jets, four in each pod, at each wingtip. Each of those little powerhouses kicked in another 2,000 kilograms, or 4,400 pounds, of thrust. So yeah, 10 engines total. And, while one narrator claimed there were just six lift jets, just about every source agrees it was actually eight RB-162s doing the heavy lifting. Someone even joked it was like two Harriers strapped together with eight lift engines. Loud. Can you imagine the noise? I bet the ground crew needed some serious earplugs. They had to solve some gnarly stability issues, too. When you're spinning out 16 columns of hot exhaust, 12 of them scorching. You've got to think about what that's doing to the ground. Turns out, tilting the main Pegasus nozzles to 85 degrees instead of 90 helped avoid blast damage and kept things under control. And the flight control system? Absolutely essential. They had entire test rigs dedicated just to refining it. The DO-31 didn't just test in secret, it showed off. They flew it to the 1969 Paris Air Show wowing the crowd with its VTOL wizardry. It even set several FAI world records on the way there. And the test pilot, Dury W. Wood, was a legend in his own right. He flew it backwards, did a barrel roll, and claimed he was the only pilot to ever make a full vertical takeoff and landing in it. He once said, there will never be another. What a legend. But like a lot of brilliant, overbuilt dreams, it came to an end. In April 1970, the program was officially canceled. Why? Well, imagine lugging around 10 engines, with only two doing the cruising. The other eight were just extra weight and drag during regular flight. 
All that complexity crushed its payload capacity and range, and the cost? Astronomical. To make matters worse, the German government felt other NATO nations weren't stepping up to share the financial load. One report summed it up bluntly. The whole concept was totally unachievable, and technical progress had outpaced operational planning. Basically, they built a plane before they really figured out how they were going to use it. Turns out, traditional air bases with their maintenance crews, fuel tanks, and hangars are actually kind of useful. Who knew? Still, even though it never made it into production, the DO-31 left its mark. To this day, it's the only jet-powered VTOL transport aircraft that's ever flown. And if you want to see one up close, you're in luck. Both flight test prototypes are preserved in Germany today. The DO-31 E1 is at the Donier Museum in Friedrichshafen. The DO-31 E3 is at the Deutsches Museum Flogwerth Schleichheim. It used to be parked right outside the main Deutsches Museum for years, like a giant, futuristic garden gnome. So there you have it, the wild 10-engine story of the DO-31, a sci-fi dream that actually flew, even if it wasn't built to last. Loud, complicated, and totally unforgettable. Pretty cool, huh? And I didn't do too bad on my German, at least in my opinion. So until next time, keep your eyes on the skies and tailwinds flowing.